Well, what a week. It's been long. Plus, the weekend. No class. Minimal homework. More sleep. Sounds good to me. Well, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Meh. I guess I'll just turn on some music and relax into the weekend. Ah, Taylor Swift, a classic. What a throwback. That's right, Romeo and Juliet. That sounds so familiar. Wait a second. I have my Shakespeare project to do this weekend. Well, let's start it right off and start talking about William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare, born in Stratford-upon-Avon in 1564, was an English poet, playwright, and actor. Shakespeare was born to John and Mary Shakespeare and was one of eight children. John Shakespeare was a leather worker and his status likely allowed for William Shakespeare to attend a local grammar school, the King's New School. The curriculum of the grammar school Shakespeare attended was very demanding and expected the students to use Latin not only in class, but also outside of class. Shakespeare left the grammar school around the age of 14. Four years later, William Shakespeare, 18, married Anne Hathaway, 26. The marriage came about quickly and their first daughter, Susanna, was born six months following the wedding. A year later, the couple's twins, Hamnet and Judith, were born. William Shakespeare was first recognized as an accomplished poet prior to his popularity as a playwright. Shakespeare witnessed a plague outbreak from 1592 to 1593, and once the epidemic subsided, Shakespeare became a member of Lord Chamberlain's Met. As a member of Lord Chamberlain's Men, William Shakespeare was a regular dramatist. During his time, he produced an average of two plays a year. Eventually, in 1603, Chamberlain's Men evolved into King's Men under King James I. With the income brought upon by Shakespeare's time with the Chamberlain's Men, William Shakespeare bought a home called New Place in Stratford-upon-Avon. He split his time between London and New Place in Stratford-upon-Avon, which is a two- or three-day commute. Shakespeare lived to the age of 52 when he died in Stratford-upon-Avon on April 23, 1616. Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare was originally written around 1595. This play was his first authentic tragedy. Shakespeare's inspiration for the play was the tragical history of Romeo and Juliet, which is a long play written in 1562 by Arthur Brooke. Romeo and Juliet is the base of many plots for modern day writing, using the idea of a tragic love story. I will be performing Act 2, Scene 1 from Romeo and Juliet. Before the scene begins, let's get a little background on the events and characters leading up to the second act. The play Romeo and Juliet includes characters based around the Montague and Capulet family feud. Juliet Capulet is the daughter of Capulet and Lady Capulet. At the age of 13, her parents are looking for a suitable husband for her to marry. She quickly falls head over heels in love with Romeo Montague. One of Juliet's closest friends is her nurse, who has raised her since birth. The nurse does not quite understand how Juliet would sacrifice herself for love. Capulet, the patriarch of the Capulet family, is the enemy of Montague for unexplained reasons. He does not take Juliet's feelings into consideration when choosing a husband. While Juliet's mother has not been overly involved in the upbringing of Juliet, Lady Capulet is excited to see her daughter get married. During the search for a husband for Juliet, Paris is chosen as the suitor of Juliet. Paris is a kinsman of the prince, which may influence Capulet's decision on granting his daughter's hand to Paris. Juliet prefers Romeo over Paris. Romeo, the son of Montague and Lady Montague, lives in the middle of a family feud as well. Before the play takes place, Romeo believes he is deeply in love with Rosaline, but she doesn't feel it the same way. Romeo falls madly in love with Juliet and is dedicated to finding true love. Montague, Romeo's father, is the bitter enemy of Capulet. Lady Montague, Romeo's mother, loves her son deeply. Romeo's friend Marcuccio and his cousin Benvolio spend a lot of time with Romeo, often trying to get his mind off women. Other relevant characters include Tybalt, Juliet's cousin, who is very loyal to the Capulet family. He is easily angered and is quick to fight with the Montagues. Peter, the Capulet servant, is involved with the invitation of guests to the Capulet feast. Friar Lawrence is a friend of both Romeo and Juliet and secretly marries the doomed couple. Balthazar is Romeo's servant and enlightens Romeo on Juliet's false death when Romeo is exiled. Friar John is responsible for taking the tragic news of Juliet's false death to Romeo, however, is intercepted. 
Romeo and Juliet takes place in Verona, Italy, and depicts the story of two star-crossed lovers, Romeo and Juliet. The play opens on a scene in the streets of Verona, where Samson and Gregory, two Capulet servants, and Abram and another Montague servant get into a disagreement. Benvolio intervenes in the scuffle between the servants. Benvolio is Romeo's co cousin and is quick in trying to de-escalate situations throughout the play. Then, Tybalt, Juliet's cousin, hops into fight once again when he sees Benvolio's sword drawn. The prince is infuriated by public actions taken by the Capulet and Montague families over their feud. He tries to keep peace in the city. Benvolio goes home to find Romeo, only to find him heartbroken over Rosaline. Benvolio encourages his cousin to look for a new woman. The scene shifts to Capulet and Paris conversing about the marriage of Juliet. Capulet mentions he is throwing a lavish party and invites Paris. Capulet then calls on Peter, his servant, to invite a list of people to the party. Peter, being illiterate, is in search for someone to help him read the guest list. Romeo and Benvolio generously help Peter read the names and get an invite to the party themselves. Romeo hopes to see Rosaline at the party, as Peter suggests she might be attending. Romeo, Benvolio, and Marcuccio have concerns about how they will enter the Capulet party since they are Montagues. As soon as Romeo enters the party, he gazes upon Juliet. Rosaline completely vanishes from Romeo's mind. However, Tybalt is quick to recognize Romeo's voice and announces the presence of a Montague. Capulet ignores this. Romeo and Juliet are devastated to discover they are each from rival families. Romeo, needing to see Juliet again, climbs the wall bordering the Capulet home to see her. Juliet appears in the window above where Romeo is, and Romeo begins speaking of Juliet. This is where Act 2, Scene 1 begins. Romeo and Juliet's balcony scene. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. O oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or, if thou wilt be not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Tis by thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's in a name that which we call a rose? By any other word would smell as sweet, so Romeo would, were he Romeo not called. Without the title, Romeo doth thy name, and for thy name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. Take thee at thy word, call me but love, and I'll be baptized. Henceforth I will never be Romeo. What man art thou that thus be screened in night, so stumblest on my counsel? By a name I know not how to tell thee who I am, for stony limits cannot hold love out. Therefore thy kinsmen are no stop to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. I would not for the world they saw thee here. Lady, by yonder blessed moon I vow that tips with silver all these fruit tree tops. Oh, swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circled orb. Least that thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all, or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, and I'll believe thee. Juliet, Juliet! I hear some noise within. Stay but a little, I will come again. A thousand times the worst to want thy light. Love goes towards love as schoolboys to their books. Love from love towards school with heavy looks. What o'clock tomorrow shall I send for thee? By the hour of nine, I will not fail. Let me stay here till thou remember it. I shall forget to have thee still stand there, remembering how I love thy company. And I'll still stay to have thee still forget, forgetting any other home but this. Sweet soda, good night, good night. Parting is such a sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till tomorrow. Sleep dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. Would I were sleep and peace 
so sweet to rest. Act two of the play is the least tragic and continues happily after the balcony scene. Friar Lawrence appears in the following scene and Romeo arrives to see him. Friar Lawrence agrees to marry the two lovebirds, hoping their marriage might end the raging feud. Romeo goes home to find Tybalt has challenged him to a duel. Romeo meets the nurse and asks her to tell Juliet to meet at Friar Lawrence's cell to be married that afternoon. The nurse relays a message back to Juliet, who is eager to be with Romeo. That afternoon, Romeo and Juliet are married by Friar Lawrence. Later, Romeo, Benvolio, and Mercutio enter the street and get into a fight with Tybalt. Mercutio and Tybalt draw swords, and Tybalt stabs Mercutio, killing him. The prince and Lady Capulet enter, and the prince exiles Romeo to Verona for his actions. Word gets to Juliet about the fight in Romeo's exile. The nurse arrives at Friar Lawrence's cell, arranging for Romeo to visit Juliet that night, since that is where Romeo is hiding. Capulet plans the wedding between Paris and Juliet for Thursday, three days away. Romeo makes his way to Juliet, where they spend the night together. Romeo then flees. Juliet refuses to marry Paris and goes to Friar Lawrence for help. He suggests a sleeping potion to avoid marrying Paris. After waking from the potion, she would flee to be with Romeo. Juliet drinks all the potion that night. Her family finds her to be dead in her room the next morning. Romeo gets word of Juliet's fake death, although he does not know it's fake, and seeks a poison so he may lie with her in death. Romeo heads to Juliet's tomb, running into Paris once outside. Romeo kills Paris, carrying him down to the tomb with him. Romeo kisses Juliet goodbye, then drinks the poison. Juliet awakes to find Romeo and Paris dead. Juliet, grief-strucken, takes Romeo's dagger and stabs herself to death. Montague arrives at the tomb, announcing the death of Lady Montague from grief. The prince scolds the Capulets and Montagues for the tragedy they caused when Paris, Romeo, and Juliet are all found dead in the tomb. Montague and Capulet agree to put the feud behind them due to the tragic events it caused. Although Romeo and Juliet may be seen as a love story, Shakespeare intended for it to be more of a tragedy. Shakespeare uses the example of a haunted relationship of Romeo and Juliet to show that love is not always the answer. The balcony scene which I performed from Act 2, Scene 1, exemplifies Romeo and Juliet passionately declaring their love for one another despite the known dangers. Love is also a violent and overpowering force, which causes people to do obscure things. The ending also signified that in order for the feud between the families to end, they needed to lose the most important things in their lives, their children, before they realized the danger of their discrepancy. Professionals are often skeptical as to why William Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet to be a tragedy instead of a straight-up love story. Shakespeare could easily have let Romeo and Juliet flee together from Verona, living happily ever after. Although tragedy writing may not have been Shakespeare's greatest strength, critics say that the quality of the writing still keeps the audience sufficiently engaged. Although the play ends with the untimely death of the star-crossed lovers, the source of the tragedy, which is the Capulet Montague feud, is resolved. I personally think this play is an interesting twist on a tragic love story. The viewers of the play must contemplate whether the unfortunate outcome is due to the fate of the characters or their free will. This is similar to Macbeth, which has the situation of betrayal coming from premeditated events. Personally, I believe Romeo and Juliet has more straightforward themes and meanings than other works of Shakespeare, making it easier to understand. After reading Romeo and Juliet in depth again as a senior, the structures of the relationship and communication between characters has more meaning now, opposed to when I read it as a freshman. I enjoy reading and researching the play again, especially now that I have more experience with the works of Shakespeare. Romeo and Juliet has continued to be a base plot for many modern-day stories, encompassing the tale of a tragic love story.